Ultra from someone who has literally spent thousands and thousands of dollars on your shoes. Well, I'm really disappointed. Oh hi, nice to see ya. Today we're gonna to spend a little bit of time talking about shoes, and specifically, Ultra shoes. Now, I've been a runner for a long time. I've been running in Ultras for the last eight years or so. We're gonna talk a lot more about why I switched to Ultra. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history of Ultra, and we're gonna talk about what's next, because there's some issues. I don't like the direction they're headed. It's created problems for me and my running and my wallet. But first, we have a workout to do. It's so once again, weighted vest hike day. And here I am about to get on a treadmill. In fact, today you're gonna see me use these ultras and you'll also hear the problem. Let's rock. Whew. Well, that's done. So, told you we're gonna talk about some shoes. You might have read the book, Born to Run. If you haven't, I would suggest it. It's a really good book. What's important to know right now is that uh, most running shoes actually don't form to foot shapes. The natural foot is wider at the toe in the toe box than most modern shoes actually are designed to be. Your feet over years and years of being squeezed into shoes are forced into that shape and it's not very good for you. You'll see that with shoes like Vans and I, I love my Vans to death. Some of the greatest shoes I've ever worn. But you can see they're like really, really narrow right here. These are actually pretty wide compared to a lot of other modern shoes. This is a pair of Allbirds and these are these are really pretty wide for, for what they are too. But when I started running, I got fit at a running store. If you've not done that, you really should go do that. Most of your local running stores, not like your REI, your Dick Sporting Goods, skip all the big box places, go to the mom and pop store that's in town. So I went and got fit for a pair of shoes and they put me in a pair of Brooks uh, Adrenaline GTS 14. That tells you how long ago that was. And that's a 14 millimeter drop shoe, meaning the, the height difference between the heel and the ball of the foot of the shoe is 14 millimeters. It was something like that maybe 14, maybe 15, something along those lines. And I ran in those shoes uh, until they were dead. Got me into training, but I was constantly dealing with shin splints and I wanted to get to a more natural stride. And so I went on a hunt sort of on my own. Um, so after a while, I went to a Newton shoe. If you've heard of Newton shoes, you'll know that their special technology is the lugs in the sole. They'll have lugs, sometimes three, sometimes four, along the bottom of the shoe right here. They were kind of tapered toward the toe and they were very chunky towards the ball of the foot. And as soon as you put the shoes on, you're kind of up on your toes, leaning forward. It gave you that immediate forward lean. But coming from a shoe with a massive, massive, drop like I was, it took a lot of time to get used to that because it requires a different set of muscles. I was foolish. I jumped straight into a pair of Newtons, got a little bit injured, and I would get about three or 400 miles out of a pair of those shoes. I had a buddy who got 900 miles out of a pair of Newtons. That doesn't really happen that much anymore. Ran in Newtons for a while, signed on with a team who was actually sponsored by Ultra at the time. Because we had that sponsorship, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give Ultras a try. 
try. I was able to make that transition pretty quickly. When I shifted over to Ultra, I started with the one version 2.5. The one shoe doesn't exist anymore. They stopped with uh, the one version 3.0. And when I knew that they weren't gonna be bringing those back, I bought a few extra pairs. I ran through them all because I can only get two to 300 miles out of a pair of those shoes. So I get about a month and a half and that's painful. They start around 120 bucks if you can find a good deal. And some of the carbon plated ones now you go over $200. And I'm just not willing to spend that for a pair of shoes I can wear for a month and a half, maybe two months at a time. Let me kind of go through what I've worn with Ultra, what I've experienced, where my problems are, and what I want. Because there are other shoes now on the marketplace that are starting to adopt some of those things that Ultra was founded on. It has kind of gotten away from. The Escalante is maybe the closest thing that existed to the one. This is a road shoe. You can see my overpronation is a big problem for these shoes. That happens with every single pair of Ultras that I own. Every single one. This right here blows out. I don't find out until my foot gets wet. The other problem that you'll see on all of these is this extreme wear in this really soft material on the outside of the shoe. These two issues right here are why I can't get a pair of these shoes to last more than about 250 to 300 miles. If I tried to run in these, there's no amount of sock that is going to stop you from forming a blister from that kind of wear because this material fails. I just cannot get enough mileage out of them to make them worthwhile. So we move from the Escalante on now to a Torin. But you can see again, I've split the side of this shoe out. Again, you can see on the bottom of the shoe where all the wear is that creates a big problem. This one I did not set up for triathlon racing, but you can see it's got all the same problems blown out to the side here. Not good, disappointing. I know people who get 500 miles or more out of a pair of ultras and I just don't know how they do it. And I know industry standard is supposed to be about 400 miles but I'm lucky to get three and that just doesn't sit right with me. It used to be different with Ultra. When I started wearing Ultra, they were an independent company. They made their own shoes and they did what made sense for runners. You can see there's this nice wide toe box here. They call a true foot shape or something similar. The idea being, we're not trying to cram your feet into these little itty bitty spaces like Nike or Adidas does. I really liked the wide toe box. I like that there's zero drop. And so those are the things I was looking for when I went looking for shoes. Wide toe box, zero drop. I've spent thousands of dollars on ultra shoes over the last eight years. So it's kind of painful to see them go the way that they have. What we're seeing right now is they have more than one foot shape and the natural foot shape, the wide toe box that ultra was famous for that created the embrace the space sort of movement from them is going away. It's all happened after they were bought by somebody else and I don't like where it's headed, but I needed a trail shoe. And this is where I think ultra really shines. They've gotten away from what made them special with the, the three different toe box sizes. They don't last and it's too expensive to keep going with that company because I need new shoes every month and a half. I can't afford to keep buying a $180 pair of shoes every month and a half for 12 months out of the year. When I went for trail shoes, I didn't know what I was looking for. Kind of stumbled in and this was my first pair of trail shoes from Ultra. I did try a pair of Hoka's. I'm not a Hoka fanboy. You're not gonna hear about Hoka here. This is the first pair of trail shoes that I ever bought from Ultra. This is the Olympus 4. These things are freaking tanks. They are chunky, they're thick, they're heavy. There's a big, massive stack here. Lots of cushioning. They're super stable. These shoes have been through hell and back. I love them. I'm gonna keep these around. Never lost a toenail. If you do your shoes right, you should never ever lose a toenail. This pair probably has more in the neighborhood of four or 500 miles on it. This pair has stood up to a lot of abuse. They show it, but um, they still have plenty of grip. They're still super comfortable. They have not blown out on the side. This $180 pair of shoes has been worth every single penny. So much so that I ordered 
Another pair, but you can see they're durable, they're tanks. I plan to run in them until they fall apart. The trail shoe side is, is great. I'll keep buying Olympus shoes unless they start going the way that the road shoes went, where I have to replace them every 200 miles because they blow out or the tread goes completely and now it's a liability to have on my foot. And as somebody who, who trains for big long distance events, I can't be spending $150 a month on shoes. It's just not feasible, it's not reasonable. And if you're not going to address why these changes, why are, are you playing with these materials that don't apparently do anything to the durability and the longevity of your shoe, then why are you making the change? Who is it serving? Because it's not the runner. It's not the customer. It's not me. That's what I want to know. Why are we making changes that conform to an industry that you once stood out from, that you once were the different shoe. You were going completely against the grain. You went to the embrace the space, a natural foot shape shoe. And now you're going away from that. And I just don't get it. We need a durable pair of shoes that we can run in for months at a time that will last for a 200 mile race that if I'm taking it on a hard gravel surface, I'm not concerned that I'm gonna shred the bottom of the shoe that holds my foot in place, that allows me to get all the miles out of it that I possibly can. That does not mean 200 miles. That should at least mean 400. So do better. And I'm gonna be looking at other brands. I've already got another pair of shoes. One that I, I don't dig as much, another that I'm, I'm pretty impressed with so far. I've got about 50 or 60 miles on this pair of shoes and it's a lot of the same concepts. I actually used to work across the street from the Ultra office and so when I would go out for a run I would see the Ultra van sitting in the parking lot of their office and I always hoped that I would see somebody out from Ultra and they would notice my shoes and say hey you're running in our shoes and then I could tell them yeah and I used to love them now not so much and here's why and here's what i'm looking for i want a pair of shoes that gives me that natural foot shape that has a zero drop platform that has a reasonable stack i don't want to go barefoot uh, but i also don't need the hoka massive stack that looks like i'm wearing platforms and i want a shoe that will last for a long time i want to get six months out of a pair of shoes i don't want to be replacing them every two months it just doesn't work, but alas, no one ever came out. And so here we are. I'll find more shoes to wear. You'll hear about them and you'll see them too. We'll figure it out together. Let's go.